everyone. Can, uh, does this sound okay? Perfect. Um, I know I stand in between you and lunch. So at least it's not between you and alcohol. <laughs> uh, so my name is Nathan Kendrick. I'm a co-founder here at Design Map, a studio up in San Francisco. Um, if you can tell by the white hairs, uh, I've been around for a while. So we've been in business for 11 years. And I've been in this industry for, for almost 20. Uh, the reason that I'm up here is actually because of the amazing effort and design work by my team. So Mike, Kana, Tin, and Tiffany, I believe, are here. And then a special shout out to Christiana and Courtney, who are not. Um, they worked on this project with uh, InsideSales.com called Sales Acceleration. And uh, they were an incredible design partner. Um, really great work. You'll probably see this video later on today. Um, however, I'm not going to talk about that today. Uh, I just couldn't help myself. I had to, given the opportunity, talk about the future of UX, so about kind of the larger topic for today. And it's Ryan Gosling. So we can tell that Ryan Gosling is a designer because he's got black rimmed glasses on. And if you've seen Blade Runner, we're all robots in the future. So the future of UX is designer robots. And he's also probably got a whole bunch of like sensors and cameras recording everything, um, you know, living in VR at this point in his autonomous self-driving car with a bunch of sidekicks and AI assistants uh, on his way to Mars. So, you know, who knows what the future is, right? Um, I think humans have proven that we're really kind of terrible predictors of the future. So I think what we do, or what, what I do know, is that the future of UX is not all of the things. Um, I think that the future of UX is really the design of designers. And so what does that, what does that really mean? What does like design of designers mean to me or to us? So if we go back to robot designer Ryan Gosling, and I think of actually myself um, as a designer, so me as a, as a designer. I worked a long time on that, by the way. <laughs> so what is it that kind of makes me as a designer or us as designers? And so I want to tell just a little story about where I come from, from an academic perspective. So this is RISD, an art and design school that I went to. This is kind of the, sorry, the quintessential shot. Uh, a little patch of grass here. It's pretty much the only patch of grass, I think, in the campus, which is why they use this shot. Anyways, I majored in graphic design. And um, if you're familiar with that program, it's like very Swiss, very international style. That program hasn't changed from the 60s. And uh, what you see here is kind of a quintessential design exercise. So step one is photocopy a whole bunch of letters from a font book. You cut them out. You create words and sentences, perfectly letter space, and then transfer that with tracing paper onto cardstock. And then step four is to perfectly hand paint those letters that form words into sentences. And so what were they teaching us in doing that? Um, I think they were really teaching us to seek perfection and to get, get it perfect and to make it kind of a solitude, solitary goal in mind, and also to really make it really, really, really difficult and fail over and over and over again in that seeking of perfection. And so what does that do as a designer? It forms this mentality, and actually Chuck is here, he created this diagram. So on one end of that spectrum in this like kind of designer's mentality is everything is terrible, bad, or you know, it's fine, it's, it's all right but they're all really closely together on that left side. And then like good is all the way over to the right of that spectrum, really hard to get to, and then kind of obviously perfect is off the chart. It's impossible to get to. So that's the design mentality, very solitary, kind of perfection-based, always trying to get there. So another way to say this um, much more elegantly is, I think writers and designers have quite a lot in common. And I'm gonna read you this poem 
uh, that's just such a wonderfully kind of expression of that, wonderful expression. So the challenge of writing is to see your hor horribleness on page, to see your terribleness, and then go to bed. And wake up the next day. Take that horribleness and that terribleness and refine it. And make it not so terrible and not so horrible, and then go to bed again. And come the next day, refine it a little bit more, and make it not so bad, and then go to bed the next day. And do it again, and make it maybe average, and then one more time. If you're lucky, maybe you get to make it good. And if you've done that, that's a success. So that's failure and success as a writer and as a designer. How many of you, raise your hand if, you, if this like resonates with you? Yeah, thank you. So I asked myself, like, what have I become <laughs> as a designer? So on my kind of inward journey, um, what does that create in me? And so over the years, I've been really interested in kind of patterns of social human beings and, and how, how I fit into those patterns. And I've, you know, the Myers-Briggs is somewhat famous or infamous, if you will, this one illustrated by uh, Star Wars characters. Um, I happen to be the INTJ, which is the mastermind or Senator Palpatine, the most evil character in Star Wars. <laughs> and so I've asked a lot of designers what their Myers-Briggs is. And invariably, it actually ends with a J so the judging, the judgmental. And so that, that's probably not a surprise given like the trade and profession that we're in. Um, another test that I take is the Enneagram, which has been really powerful. Um, don't mind that diagram, it looks kind of cultish. It's not a cult. It's like really powerful and constructive. Um, this one has been really helpful for me. So it turns out I'm a type eight. Uh, it's called an active controller. Um, it's also known as like the protector or the challenger or the asserter. And um, you know, how did I kind of become this personality type? And so post-college, I'll tell you a little story again. Uh, just after college, I won't do a whole life's memoir, so don't worry. Um, so post-college, I, I jumped really two feet uh, into the internet boom here in Silicon Valley. And this was all like pre-Google, pre-iMac, you know, design wasn't really embedded into the culture here. Um, no one really knew what design is or, or how it could help them. Uh, so I spent years being kind of that lone wolf designer that ended up defending my work, kind of proving its value and my value, ultimately. And that's really difficult, really frustrating, very you know, kind of suffering based, really similar to how I was trained as a graphic designer. Um, the, 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 the thing is, is that I was like moderately successful. I got to work at these incredible companies, big brands, big tech companies to, to small, exciting startups. And so what I realized is like no one wants to work with a Gordon Ramsay, right, um, of Kitchen Nightmares. By the way, he's a great guy, but his character in Kitchen Nightmares, no one wants to work with him. He's a control freak. You know, look at, look at my face in that photo. No one wants to work with that guy. And so through all this kind of proving myself and proving design's worth, I, I create a certain personality type. And so these are kind of some words associated with that. So some of these that you know, I thought were strengths were, were ultimately really weaknesses that, that worked against me. So being decisive could be a strength, but, but it could also be a weakness where I'm not inclusive or getting under other people's input and so if gone unchecked, you know, again, they, they really become weaknesses. And these are, you know, this is pretty painful stuff. This is being vulnerable, being uh, understanding what, what you can do good and bad in. Critical is a big one, right, being a designer. And, and I end up being very self-critical. But there's apps for that, right? So I use Headspace, which has been great. I use Mood Notes, a beautifully designed app to kind of journal your emotions. And so on this like journey as kind of becoming a designer um, that creates certain attributes that can be powerfully good or powerfully bad, um, what I realize is like introspection only, only kind of gets you so far. So 
design really takes a team, it takes a whole company to build and design something like a product or a piece of software. And it isn't just about me. It's about how I can empathize, not just with the end users, but with the team around me. So these books have been um, really valuable for me on this like outward journey, if you will. I'm not gonna go over all of these, but uh, uh, I think Grace mentioned Daniel Pink's book, Drive, which is essential reading at our studio. Um, but I'm gonna just choose one of these, Nonviolent Communication. I, I don't know how many of you know this book, but when I discovered it, it, it was really powerful. And I just wanna read this quote on this book. So when you're busy judging people, you have no time to love them. And so that J that's really strong in me and, and with us, this really resonates with me. So the model is simple. The book is, 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 is much more in depth. But what is nonviolent communication? So knowing how to ask for what we want, how to hear others, even in disagreement, and how to move towards solutions that work for all. Is how do we put that into practice? It's really two-sided. So think of empathy, which is really being curious. So what is the other person seeing or doing or hearing? Observation. Can, be, can you be curious about that other person? What are they feeling? What do you feel? That's the question that you can ask. Is it, are you feeling that way because you need something? Would you like me to do something? Can, can you use my help? And on the flip side is honesty. So this is about yourself. I saw or heard something, my observations. Can I articulate that? If I can articulate that, then I can tell you how I feel. How I feel is connected to my needs, met or unmet. And then making a bid, making a request. Would you be willing to help me? And I think that's really hard for designers. That's really hard for me, asking for help. And so what I really like about this model is that it, it invites us to really expand our vocabulary. And so there's really like five core emotions or core feelings, but, but there's a lot of subtlety and variety and range to them. And building this vocabulary around feelings is, is really important in how we communicate with both ourselves as well as others. And then there's like six core needs of human beings, connection, well-being, honesty, et cetera. And then a huge range of those core needs. So practicing empathy and honesty, I believe is a skill just like any other, drawing wireframes, learning, learning code, um, making a presentation. They're really, they're really skills that we can kind of diligently and rigorously build. Widen our, widening our vocabulary is critical in producing really great work together. And so through kind of understanding what makes me tick and how to work better with other people is, is really what I liken to like our journey together. And so I wanted to share today like a framework um, of this as, as just a little step further. So if I think of myself as a designer or you guys as designers, um, I believe that there's really three vectors to each person. And so those vectors are grit, heart, quality, and heart. So grit is really what drives you forward, what motivates you, what, what makes you persevere through the good times and the bad times. Quality is what we know well as designers, right? Raising that bar, having a huge, a high standard, almost perfection that we're striving for. And then heart is all about emotional intelligence. How well do I know myself? And how curious and how well do I know other people around me. And so the future of design is really the design of designers. A designer with those qualities, those three vectors that work well with a team of people, they can design the future. They are the future of UX. And so it's not all the things. It's not Ryan Gosling. It's not just about me either, but it's really all of us, all uniquely shaped with our own perspectives 
being curious about each other and ourselves. We can really create the future of UX. And I think we just have a couple seconds. I think I used up all my time. Thank you. Would love to talk with you after this.